Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Denise Wood here with our new weekend broadcast. If you've ever been waiting in the rain and unable to hail a cab, you know how frustrating it can be. While the problem might soon become a thing of the past, Volkswagen has made a major investment in the Israeli company Get Taxi. And if you're in Europe or the U.S., the company is probably headed to your city. Volkswagen just announced that it's investing $300 million in Get Taxi. And now the company is planning a major expansion. Get Taxi is an Israeli company known for its innovative app that lets users order a taxi from their phone, matches them with a driver from their company, and lets them choose whether they want to pay with cash or a credit card. While apps like Uber or Lyft offer similar services, there's a big difference. Uber has had major problems because of allowing civilian drivers that don't have to go through extensive checks before working for the company, which has caused a lot of people to be wary of the app. With Get Taxi, you know you're getting a professional taxi driver and car along with other features like the ability to pre-order taxis, and even an option to order a taxi that will bring you items like champagne, and soon you'll even be able to order a plumber to fix your shower. The company's taxi service has been extremely successful in Israel, and they've already expanded to 60 cities worldwide, including major urban centers like London and New York. The company says its new investment from Volkswagen is going to push the expansion along even further. And Get CEO Shahar Weiser says they're planning to expand soon to the rest of Europe and the U.S. This week marked the 40th anniversary of the Jacob's Ladder Music Festival. Thousands of campers took part in the event, which is held each year at the Sea of Galilee. ILTV Steve Leibovitz met up with the festival's director, Menachem Vinograd, to hear more about it. Quite an institution. I mean, nothing lasts for that long in this country. How have you managed to, to outlive so many other festivals, so many other traditions? It's because it's our our dream, our baby. Uh, we did it by ourselves. This is not a committee. This is not a camel put. They're not a horse put together by a committee that turns into a camel. Nobody tells us what to do. It's it, we we run it, and we run it with the help of our family, our children are involved, our children's friends are involved, our children's friends' friends are involved. And it's like a family. It's run like a family. But from the top, we don't wait for Mimun from the Sochnu. We don't wait for. Um, for, for, for any sort of charity or any sort of investment or any sort of handouts, we do it ourselves. And uh, we've been able to carry on that way. The people that come here are such a, a mixture of Anglo immigrants, immigrants from the U.S. and other Anglo countries, and the music is to their taste, but also a lot of Israelis and a lot of second and even third generation. Yep. Well, this is what we came here. We came for to have. Why we came here? We came for to, to have children and for them to have children and uh, and and this is it. So the the Israelis, many of the Israelis you see around are our children, our children's children, and uh, and it reflects our taste, our influence. Everybody wants this this atmosphere of peace. The people who are here, anyway. Okay, and uh, so many of us, I've been to about 30 of the festivals out of 40, 30 years out of 40, always in the summer one. I know you now have also a winter festival, and I mark my calendar by it. I mean, there's no way I would miss it. I try to avoid being out of the country when it happens. Are most of the people here people that are coming back year after year? Many, many, many of them. There are also many first-time people, but many of them say, oh, I've been coming for 40 years, I've been coming for 30 years, uh, this is my ninth time here. This is, And anybody who's for the first time, they will be here for a second time, we know that in the third. And and let's just hope that the Lord gives us strength to carry on till Mea Vesrim. At Mea Vesrim, exactly. Menachem Vinograd, Thank thanks you. so much for, for being with us at, on ILTV. A pleasure, a pleasure. Thank you. Bye, everybody! 
If you've ever had a relative that has trouble walking, you know how much that can affect their quality of life. An Israeli company has come up with some amazing technology that gives individuals the ability to walk or even run a marathon. The Israeli company is no stranger to success, and their technology has already helped quadriplegics walk and even run again. But now the company is eyeing a much bigger market, and they've developed a special exoskeleton that will be used to help individuals who have suffered from MS, strokes, or the hazards of old age. Rewalk CEO Larry Jasinski says his company saw a big gap in the market for lower cost and lightweight exoskeleton systems to help these groups of people. And he believes that their new product will be able to improve the quality of life for millions of people. Rewalk's system is really practical and lets paralyzed individuals walk almost like healthy individuals. The person leans forward to get the system to take the first step, and then the technology takes over. Rewalk isn't the only company to work on technology like this, but its exoskeleton is the first one to receive FDA approval. The paraplegic exoskeleton is already helping people all over the world, but there's a limited number of people who are paralyzed in the world, and the technology is expensive. The company thinks its new exoskeleton will be available to a much greater number of people, because it's much cheaper and lighter to wear. Jasinski says the new system is a soft suit, which is made up of fabric-based designs that attach to the wearer's legs and carry power to points in the legs to help them move. Rewalk has already tested the new system in collaboration with Harvard University's Weiss Institute, and the trials have been incredibly successful. The two organizations are planning to continue with clinical trials and licensing and plan to get the suit on the market as soon as possible. Israel is known as a startup nation, and the small country is a leader in science and technology. While it might seem like innovation is effortless in Israel, there's a lot of work put into it, as well as a lot of rules and regulations. Israel's Minister of Science and Technology, Ophira Kunis, is here with us today to talk about all of this and more. Thanks so much for coming in today. Now, I want to ask, what do you think about the new coalition? Next week, uh, I hope that the Knesset uh, uh, approve our suggestion to um, to, uh, to build a new coalition. It's not a new government, it's a new coalition. Um, actually, uh, last May, May 2015, uh, all of us uh, uh, thought that it would be a good idea if Mr. Lieberman will be part of the government. Okay, so it, uh, it, it takes one year, and uh, one year is next week. Uh, he will be a part of the government, Israel Beitenu will be part of the Likud coalition. It's much better that we will be 66 instead of 61. So simple. Definitely. <laughs> it's a math game. Yeah, that's right. Now, on a different topic, I want to ask you about the French Peace Initiative. How yeah. is that affecting Israel? Uh, we are opposed to uh, French uh, initiative. And the reason is not that Israel don't want peace and don't want to negotiate. The opposite is the, is the truth. We want to negotiate with the Palestinians. We want them to come to the table again because they ran away from the table. As you know, um, uh, it was uh, Abu Mazen's decision three years ago. We want them to negotiate with us directly and without preconditions. We can accept the, the, the fact that the fr French can be involved, but you know, they can watch the negotiation. <laughs> they cannot be part of the negotiation because we don't have any, we don't have any the conflict with the France or with the United Kingdom or with anyone else. We have the conflict with, with the Palestinians. And they are here, from here, from this studio in Tel Aviv, it's something like 35 minutes to Ramallah, and it's 15 minutes be, be, between the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem and the Mukata in Ramallah. So they want to talk, they want to speak. We are for it. We want peace. We want peace with them like we, you know, we want the peace with Jordan and with Egypt. But as we did with Jordan and Egypt, it was, you know, it was direct negotiation and without right. preconditions. They want uh, uh, preconditions. They want us to, to uh, say from the beginning that we agree to uh, redraw to uh, 67 lines and to uh, split Jerusalem. Uh, it won't happen. If they want to uh, speak, so they will come again to the table. We will start to uh, negotiate and we'll talk about whatever they want around the table. Definitely. And directly between Israel and the Palestinians. Definitely. Now, moving to a slightly different topic, you were recently in the U.S. Can you tell yeah. us more about your trip? Ah, yes. It, uh, I was very happy to meet with the uh, Jewish communities in Philadelphia, in Baltimore, and in New York. Um, first of all, I appreciate their support. I think yeah. that it's very important. We need this, the, the support. And, and I want to tell you what I told them last week. 
I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about atmosphere. I'm talking about ideas. Uh, I know that, uh, unfortunately, especially in the West Coast, the BDS uh, uh, initiative is, uh, unfortunately, they are there in the UCLA, in the uh, universities, in the institutes, in institutes. I don't want them to come to the East Coast, not to Philadelphia, not to Baltimore, not to DC, not to New York, not to Boston. Uh, I said that it's a uh, it's very ugly initiative. If, uh, if, you know, we talked about direct negotiation, there is a conflict. Okay, we know that there is a conflict. It's not new, it's for, I don't know, one, 100 years old already. So we, they want to solve, the, you know, they want to solve the, the conflict. I, even the BDS supporters, they should uh, uh, put the Palestinians under pressure to uh, negotiate with Israel and not with the ideas of boycott and the other, uh, the other ideas. And of course, there are lies. Because the BDS initiative and the supporters, it's all a one big lie about Israel. And I uh, ask the uh, communities in Philadelphia, Baltimore, and New York last week to support us and to struggle the BDS supporters in the universities, in the institute. I, I met the Hillel students, great people, really great, 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 and I want to, and I, I appreciate their support. And we talked about the other issues, even about the coalition. <laughs> they asked me a lot of questions. Oh, it's good. Questions. They want to know. Very they want to know because, as you remember, last week we talked about national unity government with labor. Uh, okay, now we, are, we have a new government with Israel Beitano. Definitely was. Yeah, but they were very interested. And it's good. I think it's fantastic they're taking an interest in Israel. I, I, I'm, I'm very for it. I asked them to come and visit Israel to see um, from here, from this place, from Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv, from Haifa, from Be'er Sheva, from Yokneam, to see the high-tech nation, this, to see the, the, the state that the, all of the, you know, the world innovation is coming from. It's from here. It's from this place. This is the beautiful place. This is a beautiful place. This is all what is good in the Middle East and not what is bad in the Middle East, like our enemies, uh, uh, you know, uh, speaking about us and talking about us. Definitely. Now, changing topics again. I know you're going on a trip next week as well to OECD countries to speak with them about um, about a number of things. Can you tell us more yeah. about that? Yeah. First of all, the trip, the visit is to Paris. Uh, I'll meet the OECD uh, ministers. Uh, as you know, Israel is part of the OECD organization. Why? Because we support uh, the free markets, and we are a free market. We are a very stable economy. With uh, you, I suppose that all of you uh, uh, see this, uh, saw this week the numbers of unemployment. It's uh, it's five percent. The inflation is very is very low. We are very stable economy, and we support the free markets. We want Israel to be a free market uh, state, and we are. And I we don't want all these social, uh, socialist ideas because we think that it's wrong for the economy and it's wrong for the citizens of Israel. So we will, uh, I'm going to speak to the General Assembly of the OECD in uh, Paris. I will tell them uh, the good things about Israel, about the Israeli economy. And I, uh, I, um, I suppose that they want to say to me some things. I, can, I, I, listen, I listen to them very carefully. Fantastic. Yeah. And final, final question. What are some economic initiatives that Israel has with other countries currently? <laughs> <laughs> I, want to say, I want to tell you, you know, all over the world, from the Far East, in Europe, of course in North America, in Latin America, all of the, uh, the, the, the states looking at Israel and, and admire what the, 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 our economy and the high-tech initiatives that uh, starts here in Israel. You know, it's not, uh, they are called us the high-tech nation. Sure. And they want to cooperate and to collaborate with Israel. Why? I will tell you, you know, I'll give you an example. I met the uh, Chinese uh, Minister of Science and Technology in Beijing in, it was, I think, at the end of 2015. I met in, uh, I have meetings in North Korea. I was supposed to travel to India in November. And of course, I signed an agreement with California State two, uh, two uh, months ago. All of them, all of them want to learn from us how such a small country and a young country, from here, 
the, the, the great ideas of the world. I'm talking about the Copaxon, the Waze, Discon Key, uh, even the Sherry Tomatoes, <laughs> and of course the Iron Dome system. It's coming, it, start, it starts here, and it's going all over the world, and all of them want to cooperate with us. This is the real situation of the State of Israel, and not the lies of our enemies. And I'm, I'm going to do it, and I, I'm, do it, I'm doing it all over. When I, meet, I, met the, I meet the uh, ambassadors, and I meet the ministers of foreign affairs, and ministers of uh, finance all over the world, including next week in Paris, as you said. Well, fantastic. It sounds like you have a lot of good things coming up, as yeah. well as the state of Israel. And I'm very <laughs> optimistic about Israel. Definitely. I'm very optimistic about Israel. It looks like a lot of good things ahead, and You're right. we all are. Thank you so You're much right. for coming. Thank you very me. much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. If you love fashion and want to help out a good cause, you won't want to miss out on this trendy event in Tel Aviv. ILTV's Natasha Kerchuk went to the annual Trend of Fashion show, where powerful Israelis from around the country gather to fight violence against women. Hundreds of thousands of women are exposed to sexual and domestic violence every day. It turns out one Israeli organization is on a mission to change that, and they brought together top Israeli designers from around the country for the cause. The organization is called Women's Spirit, and what we do is basically, we're for the day after. A woman leaves a situation of violence. Many times in Israel, people go back to the violence, and we say, no, what we're going to do is we're going to support them, help them find themselves jobs, a way to support themselves financially, so they don't need to go back to the world of violence. Every year, Women's Spirit collaborates with the fashion world to create the Trenda Fashion Show. The annual event fundraises money to help support female victims of violence, and it's led by Moti Raif, one of Israel's top fashion figures. Always fashion, you know, lead us to do, like, uh, good things. And this is part of it. First of all, it's very emotional, you know, um, show for me and also for them, you know. I believe that every woman should uh, fight against violence, especially for women, and that's what we're doing. This is our cause. Around 200,000 women in Israel are currently being exposed to either domestic or sexual violence, and 50% of those that actually make it out of abusive relationships end up going back to their abusers. What's happening in Israel is that there's a lot of money spent on either punishing the perpetrator, or supporting something other than, but nothing's really there for the woman who wants to say, I've left, what happens now? You know, she begins her life in a, new, in a new city usually, has to create new friends, find a job, put her children in school, and so all of a sudden she's like in this blank, empty, kind of vast desert, and there's no one there, and we think, we're there for you. So how does a Trenda event work? Around 125 of Israel's top fashion designers have donated clothing to be sold at the fashion event, and all of the profits go to women in need. So as you can see, around me are thousands of beautiful dresses, shirts, everything you can imagine, and they've all been donated by top Israeli designers. So what does that mean? As a woman, you can come here, find any dress that you like. It costs a third of the price that you would normally buy it in a store, and all that money is being donated towards a good cause. Trenda is even kicked off by an exciting fashion show where powerful Israeli women from around the country walk down the runway in honor of female victims. And I'm very happy to be here because I think that it is a very, very important issue. Uh, violence against women and non-equal um, payment, you know, and it still happens till today. Also really important because a lot of people think, not in my circle, and we have to know that the women we work with are uh, both Jewish and Arab. We work with new immigrants, Russian, Ethiopians, uh, Argentinians, Brazilians, Americans. Um, it's a, it meets everybody and anybody. Lots of celebrities taking part in Trenda's fashion show say the event hits close to home. From the bottom of my heart, I think powerful women, they all have something in their past that brought them and made them like as powerful. I mean, you just you don't just go through a whole lifetime becoming a strong woman without like stepping to to like some ditches. It's fair to say that the trend of fashion event does more than just fundraise money. It unites women from around Israel and ultimately reminds them about how much power they have to help one another. This is Natasha Kirchuk reporting from Tel Aviv.
All right, everybody, that's it for today's show. Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV. And don't forget to check out our morning update on Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching and Shabbat Shalom.